oyster aquaculture happens really just in nature, right? We aren't adding anything to the water. There's not a whole lot that we can do to control how our animals grow or how fast they grow. One of the things that we can do is to put in the animals that perform the best uh, in the conditions that we put them in. And, and that's uh, essentially what we do with selective breeding. And genomics is a way to more precisely target the traits that we want and get better results so that we can help our animals evolve to better suit our needs. My name is Martin Marais. I'm one of the co-owners at L'État Ruisseau Bar, which is a family-owned oyster company here in Shippigan, in New Brunswick. We're involved really in all aspects of oyster aquaculture, uh, you know, really from, from egg to plate. The company was started in 1972 by my grandfather and two of his friends. It was really the beginnings of the oyster aquaculture industry here in New Brunswick. They were one of the first to transform oyster from a fishing industry into a real farming business. I take care of the hatchery, a lab type setting where we bring oysters in in the winter, we spawn them and then raise them up until they're about a quarter inch. Then we plant them out to the nursery and that's sort of where, where, where my job pretty much ends and my brother's begins. The basics of breeding oysters have been known for decades now, but it's really a whole other story to get the techniques on paper than to be able to scale them and apply them in a commercial context. To be able to carry out a breeding program, you, you need it to be able to close the life cycle and be able to breed oysters indoors. And that really wasn't um, on the tables for the industry up until a few years ago. It's just now become possible with the advances that we've made in terms of our hatchery success and then the relative affordability of genomics technologies that have sort of really come together to the, allow us to engage in this kind of research uh, at this point. Uh, André and Martin Mallet had started uh, like a first generation of, uh, of selective breeding with the goal to develop the first domestic strain uh, of oysters that could perform better in terms of growth and other characteristics that are valuable in production. We operate in a, at the northern range limit of where oysters naturally occur. Uh, our biggest challenge right now is winter. All our bays are completely ice covered for six months of the year, so our oysters here grow a lot more slowly. The hope is to have the oysters to grow faster and in this way reach sexual maturation earlier such that we can shorten generation time and as such take less time to produce uh, marketable uh, oysters. We look at some genomes that will be associate to an increase in growth. After that, we'll find the individual of that and be able to mix the individual together and do some artificial selection to increase the growth for the domestic line. Because our oysters take so long to grow, reducing the production cycle even a little bit has a huge economic impact. So not only on uh, you know, reducing the cost with rearing the oysters, but also increasing the turnover or productivity of the farm. These oysters are the same age. They're born on the same day. And then with changing environmental conditions, we might expect further challenges in the future from things like ocean acidification or new diseases that might not normally survive on our waters. Second uh, important trait is uh, larval survival. So the uh, ERB make a production of baby oysters that starts at the larval stage, and uh, that's a stage that is pretty critical in terms of survival, and that's where most mortality uh, happens. So if you can select for oysters that will produce uh, larval uh, with a better survival rate, that's all good for the industries. One of the main goals um, in terms of looking at the wild oyster populations is to get a better understanding of these associations between the genetics and the environmental conditions so that in, in the future we can incorporate the environmental aspect into the genomic selection so that when these oysters go back into the wild environments we have a better sense of how well suited they are to their local environmental conditions. 
also a second goal of a and that is doing that with respect of the ecology of uh, the natural population of the oysters. The outcome is going to be a strain of oysters that we're going to be able to, to breed here and it's really sort of the future of, of our company. So we're very much involved in all aspects of the breeding decisions, rearing the animals and you know consulting with the Dr. Bernaches's lab as to the traits that we want to see reflected in the final population. Selective breeding uh, has been has been there for you know in, in agriculture production and so on to, in, to improve production to uh, to solve issues related to disease, uh, to disease resistance and all of those things. So uh, of course we expect that these oysters will perform better in terms of what's being uh, needed for the industry and ultimately increase the, the profit margin for everyone. We're the biggest uh, shellfish hatchery in eastern Canada. The oysters that we're going to be producing as part of this project aren't just for our own farm, but really for any grower who wants to try them out on their farm. So the gains in productivity that we'll be making essentially will be distributed to anyone who wants the seed. This is going to have a transformative impact for the industry. Cutting even a year off the growth cycle makes a huge difference to the bottom line. I have a PhD in evolutionary genetics. I did my research with the classic model organism, Drosophila melanogaster, so I was working in sexual selection and fruit flies before I was doing oysters. <laughs> the kind of work that we're doing in this project, actually what's really interesting for me is that from a fundamental research point of view, it's just as exciting as any project that I worked on in my PhD work, but we're doing it in a system that has immediate real-world application. And so we're able to see that through to the final application. And so for me, it actually adds an, an extra layer uh, uh, of reward.